Hi guys, good morning. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, the, the concept of upside potential versus downside risk in real estate. Upside potential is something where, I'll just give you an example, you can add an extra bedroom to a house or a condo or apartment complex to increase rent. Another thing upside potential is, is if you purchase a property and let's say you've got four units and three of them are rented, but you're collecting 600 a month in rent with the potential that maybe you could increase the rent over the next five years to slowly up to $800 a month. Or let's say um, one of your tenants is going to move out in two or three months and you could put a new one in at a higher level of rent. And how you can do that is that the rental market is actually at a higher rate uh, the other option is that you could fix the unit up with better condition inside, paint it, carpet, uh, granite countertops, and then increase the rents. Um, another thing that people don't talk about much because it's, well, Airbnbs have been around for 10 years, is to put it on Airbnb. And if you can keep your costs in terms of maintaining it low, like the turnover rate of the room and the housekeeping and um, self-managing the Airbnb listings. That could be another way to garner a higher level of return on your property. Um, now, downside risk. What is downside risk? Things like the cost of repairs. You might buy a property and find that your estimation is too low in terms of repairing it you might find that um, the maintenance, the annual maintenance is much higher because the building is really old and you've got to fix the plumbing or, you know, for me, rentals very commonly, the, the kitchen faucet will, will um, start leaking. Uh, having a dishwasher is also a very iffy thing because they often start leaking underneath the, the um, kitchen sink and it's very costly um, having a garbage disposal that will also break, you know, I would say within three to five years, dishwasher and those things, they really don't return you any additional rental returns. Um, another thing, so I keep those out of my property, the, the dishwasher and the, the garbage disposal. And the other thing is like the little hand sprayer thing. I I keep those out too. I don't even install those because they break and they just don't add any additional value for, for me, you know? Um, but I mean, those are small things. Those are, you know, hundreds of dollars type of thing. The bigger downside risk is, um, you buy a property, you're rehabbing and you find that there's an unpermitted addition and that might cost you thousand dollars to repair, or you're in a village where they require an inspection and now you've got to get licensed roofer, licensed masonry, licensed everything um, to make a lot of repairs on the exterior of the property, maybe gutters, um, a brick patio in the rear, or um, the inside of the house might require uh, the common things that always need licensing, uh, typically electrical, plumbing, uh, roofing, foundation, you know, things like that. Um, I, I mean, I can only say for sure the electrical and plumbing are the things that you definitely always need licensing, um, plus or minus the roofing. But, um, you know, when a village gets involved, they could, they could ask for anything. Um, so, so just, well, I guess the key thoughts about this is when you're looking for an investment property, and that's even if you're buying your first time buyer, you're a downsizing, um, empty nest, you know, you're over 50 and your kids moved out and you're looking to downsize to a smaller house. Buying a house is always an investment. Um, these are things to consider. Uh, you may consider renting out a room in your house if you're comfortable enough, and that could generate you at least another 500, 600 a month that will help subsidize your mortgage or help subsidize your, your living standards. And um, consider Consider your upside potential and your downside risk when you're buying. 
Start with a property that you can handle if you're young in your 20s, 30s, you're getting started, maybe going to college and your parents are helping you. Start with a condo. They're easier to maintain because you don't have to cut the grass or anything outside the building like paint or fences. Typically, the HOA will cover that. And then maybe you can move on to a single family home, go into duplex, fourplex, eightplex, twentyplex. You know, I mean that I kind of think that's kind of the the idea of progression in real estate as you get to more complexity and things that become a little bit more complicated. Although even people who are very professional typically can also stay with just carpet and paint rehabs. Anyway, I will uh, leave it at that for now. You guys have a great day and until the next video, I will see you later.